to talk about the GOAT debate because there's been so much talk before this. If Messi wins the World Cup, will that finally settle it once and for all? And we're talking about all types of things here. There's the Messi-Ronaldo GOAT debate. There's Messi stepping out of Madara Maradona's shadow debate. And now Kylian Mbappe pops up and goes, hello, second World Cup <laughs> final for me and look what I'm doing. So where do hey, you stand right, about hello, the hello. Hello. right now, Ale Moreno? I don't know why we have to shoehorn Cristiano Ronaldo into this conversation. I, are we contractually obligated to be doing this? For I don't quite Alex, understand why we go in this direction. For the uh, to, but to be honest, Ale, a lot of people did make this one of their tick lists that they said, if Messi does this, then this means. Okay, great. I'm glad for those people. <laughs> they have their answer now. So can they move on with their lives now? Are they done with with this ridiculous and really, uh, honestly, unnecessary conversation in comparing Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi? I'm going to highlight Lionel Messi. Prior to this final, I would have given you the same answer I'm about to give you. I prefer Messi to Cristiano Ronaldo. And that's a personal taste. And it's no knock on Cristiano Ronaldo. I appreciate the things that he has done in the game. And he has been unbelievable, ridiculously good for so many years. But I prefer Lionel Messi. And I think he does things on the field that I can relate to and that I can appreciate much more so than the things that Cristiano Ronaldo can do. So that's it. For me, it's Lionel Messi. As it pertains, which I think is a far more uh, important conversation to be having, given where we are today, and who we're talking about, and Argentina winning the World Cup, is whether Lionel Messi has indeed stepped out of the shadow, if you believe he was in the shadow of Diego Maradona. It is very difficult for a person like me, born in the late 70s, that grew up with Maradona at every turn in South American football, that he was indeed the reference point for everybody who played the game in South America, unless you're from Brazil, you would look at Maradona as something else other than a person. He was an entirely different level. And yet today, Lionel Messi is undeniable. Undeniable. There is nothing else I can hang on to and say other than my emotional connection with Diego Maradona and what he meant to me as a kid and what he meant to us as a family and watching his games, gathering around the TV, watching his games and suffering and winning and enjoying everything that Maradona was. Other than emotional connection, I have no other argument. It is Lionel Messi. And he has gone to finals and has lost finals. And what I think is in, it's, it's, the, it's the most outstanding aspect of Lionel Messi's career with Argentina is that while there were many moments in which he could have chosen to turn his back, walk away and say, I don't need this, he kept coming back for the pain. He kept coming back for the suffering. He kept coming back for the criticism. He kept coming back. Even in this World Cup after losing to Saudi Arabia, he kept coming back and so did his team. I cannot deny Lionel Messi any longer. Lionel Messi is the best player in the history of the game. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Ali here. I'll be very quick. I'm just going to echo everything he said and, and just add a few things. I think the moment that you use World Cups, major tournament trophies, as sort of the barometer for, you know, greatness, you are diminishing everything that Ali was just saying in terms of his overall career. And I'm specifically talking about Lionel Messi. To me, even before this final, he was. Now, obviously, there's a little bit of a personal bias because I never had the fortune of seeing Pele live. You know, uh, I'm, I'm a little younger than Alejandro. So obviously, I, I only have vague memories of Diego Maradona from 1986 <laughs> and Napoli, et cetera. Hey, hey. The, the hairline doesn't say that you're younger than me, though. I, I knew I knew I knew he was going to go there. This is called hard work, Alejandro. Every day. Oh, a, a lot of stress, I see. <laughs> you know what? I started this by complimenting you. Now, now you're coming at me. Come on now. Hey, no, but listen, yeah. let me just. Let me We've just got a new rivalry on here on the daily. Don't worry about Messi Ronaldo. It's all about LA and LME. No, I, I, LA wins. Don't worry about it. <laughs> the only thing that I'm going to say to Messi, and I'll conclude it here, is to me, he's always been the greatest because he has, in my opinion, aside from the emotional connotations and the obstacles that he's had to do, he has delivered over and over again in the most impossible of ways. 
And the fact that now he has won this at 35 years old, pretty much transformed as a player. Because let's remember that he he had to he suffered during COVID, like physically and mentally. He came to PSG and sort of retransformed himself. And then Obviously, through that Copa American champion now winning the World Cup, to me, you don't need that to balance what he is. He's always been that because he defies so many things that many other players haven't had. Lionel Messi, the greatest player that's ever played. What about okay, you, Jorge? I, I was just going to say, I, I think we have to pay you know, due respect to the people, that, the players that have gone in the past because Messi is the best of his generation, no doubt. Maradona was the best of his generation. Zinedine Zidane was the best of his generation. And there's a... I mean, look at Ronaldo, the original Ronaldo. I mean... These guys were amazing players. They were untouchable at their best. And I think it, it, it's almost disrespectful in many ways to say that Messi or Ronaldo or whoever is better than any of them because there's a clip that I saw on Twitter last night. Somebody's put together a, a maybe two-minute video of Diego Maradona being absolutely kicked off every pitch he played. The, the treatment he got was was brutal. Seriously, seriously brutal treatment, which Messi's not really had to put up with because the game's changed. And for an attacking player, it's, it's it, not as easy to play, but it's... It's less dangerous to play. Maradona had to play like that every time he played. Even the World Cup final against Germany in 86, he was kicked off the pitch. So I think we should give respect to the players of the past and say Messi is the best of his generation. I don't know if he's better than Maradona. I mean, like, like Ale, you know, Maradona for me was just in a different league, different level. And I think, you know, Zidane was an amazing player. Romario was an amazing player. And I think we have to just give these guys the credit that they deserve at their at the, at their peak, you know, in 10 years' time, there'll be somebody else that we talk about as being potentially the best ever. It might be Mbappe, but right now, the best of his generation for the last 10 years has been Lionel Messi. And Ronaldo's not been far behind, but, you know, Messi's, Messi's won everything now. He's won the World Cup. And I think World Cups are the difference. World Cups, you know, there's, there are certain players that don't get a mention in the best player debate because they didn't play in World Cups. You know, people like George Best, who people who watch Man United will say he's the best they've ever seen, never played the World Cup. You can't measure him at that level because he didn't play in the World Cup. George Messi's Weir. Won- yeah, yeah, George Weah. You know the, these players that uh, you know. Zlatan didn't play in many World Cups. Did he play when it ended his career? I think so. World Cups make the difference. World Cups enable players to go that extra edge. That they're, they're the summit of the game. You know, and if we talk about Messi and Maradona, it, they start the debate by saying putting medals on the table. And Messi and Maradona have both got a World Cup winners' medal now. Pele's got three, so he might say, "Well, I've got three, so there you go." But <laughs> it's World Cup winners' medals, and every generation has its legend and its star. And this is, and Messi is our generation, and you know. Who comes next, we don't know, but there'll be somebody. But yeah, and obviously there'll be all these chats again and everybody pitting one another, uh, a player against another. Ale, before we wrap up on this game, who else stood out to you today for either side? Well, okay. There are many players to highlight. Feel free, uh, feel free. Look, let's think about Diego Martinez, and not because he makes a save in the penalty kick shootout, what about the save that he makes on Colomuani at the end of extra time? The kick save. Uh, that keeps Argentina going to penalty kicks where it looked as if it was going to be over, over right then and there. Uh, that's obvious for me. But let's go sort of more in depth about Argentina. I thought McAllister was outstanding. Not only today, but throughout the course of the tournament. I thought Di Maria was fantastic. I thought that uh, you have played in Enzo Fernandez, who was not a starter for this team. And because of some of the early struggles of Argentina, he is presented with an opportunity. And since the Mexico game, he's taken that opportunity and said, yep, I am here. Count me in. I will be an important part for this group. The effort and work of Rodrigo De Paul, who wasn't always the cleanest on the ball, but he was indeed the spirit of this team. The importance of a guy like Julian Alvarez, who, again, was not a starter. It was supposed to be Lautaro Martinez, but his endless willingness to move around, to press, to attack, to run in behind, to have this level of activity that allows then Lionel Messi to have a freedom that he wouldn't have otherwise. And, and those, that, that's just a few from Argentina. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm focusing on Argentina because up until the Mbappe penalty kick, Argentina had been far superior. It all changed with that. And then Mbappe took over and the big guys playing on top of France took over. And, and, and then it became a different game. And that physicality of France of those big guys was too much for Argentina to handle. But up until that point, it had been a very dominant performance from Argentina. If I'm going to highlight somebody in France, and I'm, I'm going to, more than a highlight, it's a low light. 
coming into this game, one of the players that we had talked about as potentially one of the best players in the tournament was Antoine Griezmann, and he was rather quiet. And I think I would point the finger at Didier Deschamps in saying that when it seemed like Antoine Griezmann was actually getting a hold of the ball, getting more into the rhythm of the game, Deschamps said, no, you're coming off the field. And so what we were expecting from him in terms of a role in this final wasn't quite there. But I think a lot of credit has to be given with the midfield of Argentina and how good they were in that area, certainly for the first 75 minutes of the game. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.